I speak to you this morning in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. You've probably heard the expression that God works in mysterious ways. Well, this week I was reminded of just how true that is. I was probably should have been doing other things, but I was checking out Facebook the other day, and I came across a post that my mother-in-law had put up. It was about her father and my wife Amy's grandfather. And it was a rare story about his life during the Second World War, because like a lot of our veterans, he didn't like to talk about what he had to experience while he was over there. He served in the Air Force, and for two years during the Second World War, he was based out of London, and he was part of a squadron who flew missions over Germany in Lancasters. Apparently, one day his commanding officer grounded him because he said, you need to go and get new glasses. You can't have a navigator up there who can't see properly. So while he was off getting himself new glasses, the rest of his squadron got shot down and killed. If his commanding officer had not ordered him to go and get new glasses that day, then Amy's grandfather would have been up in that plane. He would have been shot down and he would have been killed along with the rest of his unit. And that, that had happened. He never would have come home from the war. He never would have got married, never would have had children. And if he never had children, Amy's mother would never have been born. She never would have grown up to meet Amy's father. They never would have had children. That means I never would have met Amy. And we wouldn't be raising two beautiful children and standing here today. When I read that post, it reminded me of a pastoral visit that I once had with a lady who was living in a retirement home. She told me this incredible story about how her dad was supposed to be on the Titanic. That he was one of the lucky ones to actually get a ticket for the inaugural voyage of this great, masterful feat of a ship. He was so excited. But he met a man who was absolutely desperate to get on that ship. He needed to get to America to be with his family. And so she told me that her father gave him his ticket and he stayed behind. Now I have to be honest with you, sometimes when I go and I visit with people in retirement homes and nursing homes, especially when it's the first time that I'm meeting a person, sometimes I have to admit I'm a little skeptical of the stories that I hear. I find myself wondering if there might not be just a bit of dementia or Alzheimer's starting to creep in. And let's just say this woman's story, it sounded a little bit too much like a recent movie that was starring Leonardo DiCaprio. It sounded a little too close to that. So I didn't believe this woman's story for one second. But then she got up. She went to a closet. And she handed me this old newspaper article. And this newspaper article, it told this incredible story about how this man gave up his ticket on the Titanic. And again, if he had gotten on that ship with the rest of the passengers on that fateful day, the woman I was talking to wouldn't exist. The life that she lived, the children that she had, the difference that she made throughout her life, none of that would have happened. Our God moves in mysterious ways. Our God can take the seemingly insignificant moments of our lives. Our God can take the decisions that we make in our lives. And I'm not just talking about the big decisions like where you're going to go to school or who you're going to marry or what your career is going to be for your lifetime. Our God can take even the littlest decisions like when we should go and get new glasses or when it might be a good idea to give your ticket to someone else and wait for the next moment. Our God can take those decisions and those moments, the moments that we don't even give a second thought to, and can use those moments
moments and those decisions in ways that we could never imagine. In ways that can help us to, to, to lead us into the life that God created us to live. In ways that can help to transform this world into what God dreams it can be. And I am betting that a lot of you sitting out there this morning, that you can look back on your life and you can put your finger on specific decisions or specific moments where if that didn't happen or if you didn't make that decision, that you would not be who you are today. Yeah, well, that might be all well and good, you might be thinking. But what about the squadron who did get shot down in that plane? What about all the men, the women, and the children who did board the Titanic on that fateful day? And I have to confess, I'm still wrestling with that. On the one hand, I'm wondering if our human brokenness, I'm wondering if our human brokenness sometimes robs us of being able to live and experience the kind of life that God created us to live. That sometimes God's plan for our life gets cut short because of our own choices. On the other hand, I think that as Christians, we are called to trust that even in the horrible, painful, and tragic moments, that our God can use those moments to lead humanity into new life. After all, isn't that what the heart of the Christian faith is all about? Death and resurrection, being led from death into new life. For those who died on that plane or on that boat, do we trust that our God used the moments of their death to lead them into new life in the kingdom of heaven. Because we can see all around us how those who died in war, World War I, World War II, all of the missions throughout history, we can see how their deaths, how God has used their death to transform this world into what it is today. The story of Ruth and Naomi in which we heard a little bit about that first reading. It's another great example of how our God can take the decisions that we make in our lives and the moments that we experience in our lives, moments and decisions that we don't even think twice about, and use them in ways that we could never imagine. So let me tell you what was going on in their lives leading up to where we encounter Naomi and Ruth in today's reading. So back before Naomi even knew who Ruth was, Naomi was married to a chap named Elimelech, and they lived in a town called Bethlehem, and they had two sons. Sadly, one day a great famine came over all the land, including Bethlehem. It was so bad that it reached a point where they couldn't find a piece of bread anywhere in the house. They couldn't find a scrap of food anywhere. And so Naomi and her husband, they made a decision. They decided that they were going to pack up their two kids and they were going to move to a, a strange foreign land called Moab. And so they moved to Moab. You do what you have to do when trying to put food on the table and provide for your family. So they moved to Moab. But sadly, after living in this land for a few years, tragedy struck the family. Naomi's husband died, leaving her widowed with two kids to raise in a foreign land far away from home. Life was not going to be easy for Naomi because widows back then, they didn't fare very well. But at least she had her two sons to look after. Well, they grew up. They got married. One married a girl named Orpah and the other married a gal named Ruth. That's where Ruth enters the story. And for about 10 years, things went along pretty well. Things were going along pretty smoothly, and they were finding their way until tragedy struck yet again. Not just one, but both of Naomi's sons died, leaving her all alone in a foreign land with no one to look after her or to provide for her needs. Things were absolutely desperate for Naomi. She was completely helpless. 
So she decided, I have no one here to look after. I'm going to go back to Bethlehem because at least there I have some distant relatives who might be able to help me out. Now she tried to say goodbye to her daughters-in-law because her daughter-in-laws, they had no responsibility whatsoever to take care of Naomi. They were responsible to their husbands. They weren't responsible to Naomi. So Naomi, she tried to say goodbye to Ruth and to Orpah and to wish them well. But Ruth said, I'm coming with you. I'm not letting you go alone. Naomi pleaded, pleaded with her, saying, Listen, Ruth, I have nothing to offer you. There is no future for you with me. Your home is here. Your family is here. Your friends are here. Your whole life is here. You need to stay here. But Ruth said to her, and I quote, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. Ruth's love was so strong for Naomi that she was willing to sacrifice everything in order to go with this poor woman who had just lost everything. Ruth left her family her home, her land, her religion, her religion, everything. She sacrificed it all to go with Naomi. So that's the story about Ruth and Naomi leading up to where we find them today. As the story continues, after all that Ruth had done for Naomi, and all the sacrifices that Ruth had made for her, Naomi wanted to give something back. Naomi realized that when she was living in the land of Moab as a widow, that she was in a hopeless situation. She realized that if God forbid something should happen to her, if she died, and Ruth was now living in a strange land as a widow, her situation would be hopeless. And so Naomi wanted some security for Ruth. And she knew. She knew that there was a law in her land that said, if your husband died, then your husband's brother would marry you and name their firstborn child after the dead husband, after the dead brother, after the dead husband. We'll get there. <laughs> the law went on and said, if there was no brother to do this, then the responsibility would fall to whoever was the next closest relative. It might sound like a strange law, but the law was the law. And here's what Naomi knew. Naomi knew that Boaz, he was the guy. Naomi knew that Boaz was the next closest relative, and he was the one who should marry Ruth. And that reading we just heard was all about Naomi trying to make that happen. She told Ruth, go get yourself cleaned up. Go put on your fanciest dress, and then go introduce yourself to Boaz. The law is the law, but it can't hurt to try and help things along a little bit, right? <laughs> and how does the story end? It's amazing. Because of Ruth's decision, because of a decision she probably didn't think twice about, because of the decision that she made all the way back in the land of Moab, because she was willing to leave her old life behind in order to go with Naomi to Bethlehem, Ruth from the land of Moab ended up marrying Boaz from the land of Bethlehem. Two people who never should have met. Moab's over here, Bethlehem's over here, and we don't have planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> Two people who should never have met. They wind up getting married. Then they had a child. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, who became the father of King David. In other words, the greatest king in Israelite history, the very lineage of Jesus, could trace his beginnings to the faithful actions and loving sacrifices of his Moabite great-grandmother, Ruth. God works in mysterious ways. Our God can and will take the decisions that we make in our lives and use them in ways that we 
could never imagine in order to lead us into the life that God created us to live, in order to transform this world into what God dreams and knows it can be. And just as Ruth could have never imagined that God would use her decision, that God would use her decision and the sacrifice she made for Naomi to bring about the greatest birth of the king, the greatest king of Israel, just as Ruth could never imagine that her decision would lead to the birth of King David, I know that the lives of the saints, of our veterans, and members of the armed forces that we are remembering today, our God has worked through each one of them, through their decisions and through their actions, to transform this broken world in ways they too could never have imagined. To those who lay down their lives. To those who give themselves in service to God and country today. And to all our veterans who, like Ruth, freely chose to leave everything behind so that we might receive the gift of life. Today we say thank you. Today we say God bless you. Today we say once again, we will remember you. Amen.